to be everybody thought I'd get a little air today if you were to ask me what my favorite biblical image of God was I'd probably give you different answers based on where I was in life and what I was currently reading in Scripture for example one of my favorite images during the Easter season is what we read in Isaiah which talks about how the Lord has laid on Jesus the iniquity of us all that's a compelling image to me I also enjoy the images of Jesus in the Gospel of John particularly John chapter 8 where he encounters the woman who has been caught in adultery and whereas everybody else condemns her Jesus says I do not condemn you go and leave your life of sin and it reminds me that no matter the mistakes that we make that God still has grace for us all but right now as we've been in this season of isolation I've been drawn to the book of Exodus and Exodus 13 has a very compelling image that I have have yet to escape in my thoughts the story is very clear you know the children of Israel were enslaved in Egypt they prayed to God and God sent Moses and Aaron to deliver them and 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 after the plagues and the struggle God does open the door for them to come out of Egypt when they come out of Egypt they have all the supplies that they need but the problem is that the time of their exodus is in the middle of the night and they don't really know where they are where they're going They've been living in a place called Goshen for a very long time, uh, for uh, generations, and, and they had not, because they were slaves, come out of that area. They were confined there, but now that God has answered their prayer and the door has been opened for them to leave, they have all the supplies they leave, but they leave having their prayer answered, walking into a dark spot in a dark place. Sometimes even the answers to our prayers leads us into darkness. When I graduated from seminary, I had a hard time finding a church. I had good grades. I had good references, but I didn't have a lot of experiences, and churches want pastors with experience. And so after a while, after we prayed, my family prayed, and I prayed, I, I was drawn by the Holy Ghost to a church in Memphis, Tennessee, and, and, and we made a connection, and I became their pastor. Uh, there was a wonderful installation service. Everybody had cake, and they had chicken, and they had all the stuff you have at receptions. It was a wonderful time. But then everybody went home. My family went home. All the people who came to the installation went home. And I had to show up at the office on, the, on that next Tuesday for my first day really there as the pastor. And I didn't really know what to do. I mean, the only consistent thing I really knew was that, you know, we were going to have on the third Tuesday our leadership meeting. On this, every Sunday, it was going to have to be some preaching done. And on Wednesday, there would have to be Bible study. Other than that, I really had to kind of learn on the fly. It was a time of uncertainty. God answered my prayer and put me in a place to serve. But the answered prayer led me into a time of darkness. But after a while, God guided me through sending people my way and, and sending mentors my way and sending me to take courses and seminars and putting books around me so that I could learn what it means to pastor outside of the basics and ended up being there for 14 years. In my time of darkness, after God had answered my prayer, God guided me all the way. That's what happens in the book of Exodus chapter 13. The Bible says that as the children of Israel have their prayer answered, the door opened, they're walking into freedom in the darkness. God guided them with a pillar of fire in the sky. And in the daytime, God guided them with a cloud in the sky. So that whether it was daytime or nighttime, God always went in front of them to guide them. It's good to know that God adjusts to the seasons that we're in. That God never leaves our side. In the daytime, God guides us as a cloud. In the evening time, God guides us as fire in the sky. When we're sad and disappointed, God guides us with a comforting hand. In a sick room, doc, God is a doctor. In a courtroom, God is a lawyer. Whatever we need, wherever we are, God guides us. And that, my friends, is good news. 
This is Pastor B. You've been touched on this Tuesday. Make sure you go to our website, www.stjamesji.org, to keep up with what's happening at the church. Make sure also that you go to our Facebook page so that you can see how our members celebrated the resurrection from home and watch our resurrection worship service right there on Facebook. God bless you. God keep you. We'll see you next week. You've been touched. Cast all your cares. Yes.